Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop on this fine autumn even tide. Well, nearly autumn. It's just about time to buck yourself off around. I'm not talking the wife, mind. From the usual scumbags, TTI Hong Kong Limited, the Milfucky Fuel. Uh, uh, I better clean that off. Chainsaw. 600 Kanucky Stan Kopex, the Jesus thing cost me. Had to dip into the retirement fund, of course, luckily. Empties are legal tender here in Canada. That's ah, gooder. I know it doesn't mean what I says it means. Changing the lingo one mallet per prism at a time. Fiknik, Milwaukee. Oh, she's kind of stout, this one. Ah, ah, a little bit ah, girthy in the hand. I should be used to that. <laughs> Fucking no world record set here today, folks. Ha! Ha! I'll leave that on for now. Safety third, am I right? Ah, oh, fuck. Sorry. Ah, ah. Time! Like I done did tell you before, 600 Kanucky Stan Kopex is enough to make you a vegetarian Christian. The cheeseless thing cost me an arm and a dick. Luckily, we didn't have to scoot this one past the budget troll on account of patrons. Just like you, what asked me to take this apart, chucking a couple bucks in the pot, and we are not beholden the big old Corpio Milwaukee to say how fucking good the thing is, because... As we saw in a uh, previous video, that DeWilt one, brushless, same thing, it, piece of garbage, piece of fucking garbage. The inwards were skookum, but the bar affectation, hey, the blade, you want, <laughs> you want to get some, uh, some woodcutters up in arms, you call this thing the blade. Holy old fuck, you never hear the end of it. So the blade wasn't attached properly. Just a real crappy way to attach it, and you throw the chain all the time. 500 bucks down the tubes. It's still sitting here like a millennial on the healing bench looking for a handout, son of a diddly. The good thing about that is, though, if you are a millennial, very little competition. All you got to do is push the broom better than the next guy, and you're in. You're in. All those cushy union jobs coming up here. When the uh, uh, shipped with just a little bit of chooch in the chotch. Let's get this thing apart. Just to reiterate why this and the DeWalt didn't cup the mustard was on account of the bar attachment. As I said, all the inwards were good. Skook them, but this bar attachment, no fucking good at all. One pin and one fastener. Okay, we see quick uh, adjust like that, but never with a torque limiting clutch that prevents you from ostensibly over tightening the bar but the problem was even after you tighten this down you can take the bar with your two dainty little fingers move it all over the place so you get in anywhere and and you throw the chain steady steady throwing the chain and it only takes so many throws of the chain until now the bar is spread right open so one thing i liked about this at the first was a good name brand for the bar oregon and then this guy, it's just a will fucky. However, having a look real closer, you know, what do they know about making bars? Fuck all. It is an Oregon bar. They just haven't had it branded. It's got all the same uh, weld spots, all the same little oil holes for the bearing. All, all Everything's the same. Leaning in close and careful real listenly. You see on there, that's an Oregon chain. Chances are I'm right. And we'll get in. Uh, here's the thing. I wanted to replace the, the Poulin Pro. You know, where you, you pull in and pull in and pull in and it just don't fucking start. For $600 hairs, you get yourself a, a Husqvarna Ranger 455. That's a pretty tough sell to me. There we go. Uh, I was going to Oh, yeah, the plastic. The plastic. Something fucky with this plastic. I'll tell you why. It's not the deep, rich red. Now, this looks orange because of the white balance of the green healing mat, our long-suffering self-healing mat. 
But this has a lighter red. It looks cheaper. It looks cheaper. It almost looks like it doesn't have any glass fiber in it. But it does. You can hear it. However, if you have a look at the older style of tools now, this is from 2011, and it's quite a, a richer, deeper red. Is coloring that much more expensive, or is it a, a, a different material? Is it not nylon? Maybe it's PP. This here's a odd little dangly bit, ostensibly for safety. Maybe if you break the chain, it doesn't come back and kill you in your iliac femoral or rather artery you bleed out and then your buddy's got to sneak into your house uh, clear your browser history for you i just barely lifted the petticoats and already we're seeing a few little warts on uh, the patient this is the adjustment for the chain tension and we see there's no bushing here it's just in some goopized plastique and same thing on the obverse just goes through this housing and uh, bears on the plastic. So if you get a 200-pound gorilla on the tool, you know, a hired hand, that uh, might not last all that long, seeing as how somebody gets in there with a tool and really tweaks that as much as possible. Same thing on this guy, all just into the plastic. So you might want to, um, if that does start start to trip or strip or jump, uh, that's what's going on. It's very likely wallered out in here. So you might be able to fix that with a little JB weld if you do end up wearing it out. I read online some complaints about this goop and schmoo all over the place, leaking all over the place. Basically, got to put tampons underneath it. This is not going to help you. The O-ring is already all pinched and fuckered. So instead of going to the bar, it's going to leak out here. You look at that. The cross-section... From the assembly at the plant. Fuckered. Further, we got some actual bucking spikes. Well, they're metal anyway. A little bit better than the DeWilt plastic ones. There's lots of interesting stuff in here. It seems like it's taken a while because I'm going every over everything with a fine tooth comb. F trying to find every little knit egg so they don't uh, reproduce. If and you're not into this sort of review, go ahead and fuck off right to the end and you can see uh, what my consensus is however i'm not going to run this saw in this video i'm going to save that uh take you out with the gopro and we'll go buck up some wood for for winter looking at the chain brake mechanism now it's spring applied and manually released through a lever action Speaking of lever, generally, if you get the cover off, leave it right the fuck where it is because it's sketchier as frig. You see it cams over and sort of locks there. But you see... Oh, 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 yeah, exactly. Watch your bloody eyeballs. Just a crappy little roll pin. I mean, a one-eighth roll pin. That's a pretty heavy spring in there and a heavy lever action. So... If in this thing will not run, it's because this brake is applied. Well, if the motor's turning but torquing out and this brake is applied, it might be able to burn through it, actually. But have a look at these roll pins because they're, they're just tiny, tiny. And, of course, these, this is already wallered out in this bore because this is a, this is a, a punched and, f and bent little tab here. You can't get very accurate. Uh, holes through holes and you see that's part of the design in there they're not too worried about it they make that hole nice and big so that they don't have to worry about the thing being perfectly aligned you know line board type deal but you see the size of that pin just minute that uh, not even a pin it's a it's a roll spring essentially and we'll take that nice big ah fuck Nice big heavy spring to uh, to spring and spring that clockworks if and you. Oh, for fuck's sakes. I got to take that out before I lose an eye. Ugh. Ew. 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 Even worse. Even fucking worse. Yuck. What the fuck? Holy fuck. This is one of them ones you just kind of want to poke with a stick and step away. 
uh, I wouldn't touch that with your dick type deal. Let's see. How are we going to do that? Let's get that guy off too. No, better to have it. Hmm. Aha. Well, that weren't fuck all in a big ship. Oh, what the big problem was. Interesting sidebar tangentially now. This uh, chain break or the kickback arrest. There's the Milwaukee. That's a metal injection molded part. We got holes in there, just speed holes for reducing the uh, moment of inertia. So it's not as heavy. But this would be metal injection molded and then the grains would grow together in an oven under atmosphere. You can see big, big fat grains in there. And then it sat around some shitty hill hole because it's all got corrosion all around the periphery and on the inside. And then surprisingly some handwork all in there in order to chamfer that to be able to get the, the shaft in nicely. Also, what surprised me, they had to chuck this on a lathe. And you can see the run out wasn't that great. And it also, it's almost like they took two bites at it. So I don't know where they're getting these parts from, but it doesn't look nearly as clean as the DeWilt. Same process, but they got it close enough to where they didn't have to hit it with the lathe. You see it's wearing in there nice. A, a lot cleaner, smaller grains, a lot nicer metal injection molded part than uh, the Milwaukee. Touching again on the plastique, we got some greebling here just to visually break it up for no reason other than the, the pew pew factor. But look at this. What in the... Uh, just ugly. It looks like some sort of cheap clock radio going on in there. And the, the color, the color is, it's not right. It's not the same color as they used to have. This tool basically never gets greasy. It's the metal cutting saw. This, this one, this mill fucky is a skookum chucher by far. But look at the, the difference in the color. Totally different color there. So it makes me wonder what, you know, how much, or maybe they're going with a different supplier, plastic supplier, and they just can't get that nice, deep, rich color. I do notice, though, they are slacking off on the greebling, so that's at least sort of kind of a step in the right direction. I've added a, a neat little feature here. We'll probably see more and more on tools. A pegboard clip hole. So that's some pegboard. I mean fantastic for guys that uh, love displaying their tools and not using them i count every time you go to grab a tool the fucking pegboard hook comes with it best thing in my opinion just put up some plywood and then screw holes the pegboard it's, once you get using it it's a pain right in the cunning linguals you, you'll see you'll see but of course it, it takes you a couple shops worth of setting up to figure out that uh maybe pegboards aren't all that fucking great anyway they, they got uh i guess you could stick a screw in there too and hang it up on your wall and match your milwaukee tattoo see how this is this is kind of friggy and farty here there we go okay there we go this i gotta go in sideways i guess somehow I'll put a little hair around that key slot and we're in holy old fuck look at this i stand corrected according to the markings on the clamshell it is pa6 uh, glass fiber reinforced 30 percent however it's so washed out looking it threw me off also you can see it's white in the high stress areas already you see that uh, whiteness there that's where the uh, that's where the glass fiber comes up and you see, uh, I don't see any visible knit lines. The uh, the mold is in good shape, but there is some weirdness here. A little bit tight over here. You see it's all, it didn't clear. Focus, you fuck. Well, it's good to know the new camera is the same as the old camera. Let me try something here. Let's focus on, ah, hey, there you go. You just hit the, hit the view screen. And then, come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it. 
You can do it. There we go. Sorry about that. You see where it's all... I'm still getting used to this new fancy dancy camera. 60p, mind. You see, that's all filled up. Here we got uh, Putin's ghost tracking us. I, actually, this is a good one on account of... It, um, this magneto restrictive strip didn't get reset, so this would be uh, lots of fun to put in some asshole's coat. Now it comes with a squinch, which I didn't notice before. If I can somehow manage to prize it out without uh, give myself summer teeth, there we go. There's the <laughs> the little baby tool. It's so cute, so cute. So fucking scabby looking. <laughs> uh, some dull beaver went at this with an apprentice and then painted it black. Now having a look at the trigger mechanism here. Pretty robust. That ain't going nowhere. No, uh, no real movement to her. Speaking of movement, this casement also, it feels chintzy because it's very flexible it's very have a look at this i mean just not what you'd expect in a in a chainsaw you know generally you put your chainsaw down you're not worried about a stick going through right through the guard in this case i'd be a little bit leery of that in the cold weather especially just snapping that off right half and two this is not a snap action switch it's not on or off it's just a potentiometer as witnessed by the small little leads here. There's no real power going through this. It's just telling the brain box what to do. Interestingly though, if you put your chain on backwards, you just flip this to reverse action and Bob's your auntie. Wow, wow. Now Ginger, careful in getting in here. I'm gonna count all these little wires. We got uh, this little chain brake switch. Now this doesn't do fuck all other than tell the confuser that uh, well, you got to stop the engine or the motor rather. So that's tiny little switch, tiny little wires, all that going back through here. We'll um, ginger careful this out. We got a couple of we got a couple of lube lines. This goes to a pump inside the the gear head itself. So we'll have to get this, and then that's a looks like a T15 or T10. Probably T10. Go in there, see if we can get that off. And ah, uh, here we go. Oh, two of them. Two of them even. I think that's got her. Oh, that's that. Um, that's that thing. That's that thing. So we got to get that. We got to get the O-ring off. I'll replace that O-ring anyway on account of it being fuckered right from the factory. That's, you know, I don't know. That's neither here nor It's, it's kind of it's shitty for sure, but is it a huge deal? Is it a, are you even going to notice that? Chances are, unless you got a bunch of saws and one's leaking like a sieve, then you won't. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Look at this. Just a little bit of poking and prodding. Wire come right off. Fuck. Broke right off, clean half and two. What the fuck over? I thought that's what the strain relief epoxy's for. That's a uh, urethane rubber in there, actually, silastic. That's, well, that's silastic, so silicon rubber. And then here's some urethane in there just to protect the brain box, but uh, we gotta do some, you gotta do some surgery, get that uh, conductor back on to the lead where it belongs. That shouldn't have happened, really. Just broke as easy as that. I mean, I wasn't even trying. Being as how that uh, chain drive, oh, there we go. Uh, not particularly skookum. I didn't have high hopes. I wasn't holding my breath for a reasonable gearbox, but boy, howdy, was I wrong. Beautiful die cast aluminium big beefy shielded or not shielded sealed bearing and proper 4140 looks to be 4140 shafting heat treated and then ground between centers gear a proper gear not metal injection molded but a proper hobbed gear 
uh, turned, uh, uh, heat treated rather, and also heat shrunk on there. The grease, um, that's a low viscosity, a, a low, um, a low viscosity grease. It doesn't have a whole lot of stickivity. Likely this would melt and get in everywhere it needs to go. So I uh, might want to look at the longevity there, but because this is not metal injection molded, they're not putting any, any kind of molybdenum disulfide to fill those voids in. They're just putting some good, decent grease in there. Now, looking at the spur gear and the bull gear, Look at the size of the involute teeth on there. Huge. <laughs> Huge. Very smart. Huge. Best schools. Uh, we got to count here. So this is one, two, three, four, nine. Nine, yeah. And then we'll just make a mark over. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Big goop. Well, that didn't fucking help at all. Okay, there. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, I gotta take my socks off. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-six. Fuck it. So, uh, twenty-six divided by nine is uh, two point uh, something between three and two point seven five. So, say two point. Uh, this thing's gotta be. Holy shit. That fucking chain. Sahal. Sahal, mon vieux. That's hauling ass. So this say is running at uh, 20,000 ripples. And I got to point this out, man. This thing. Again. Huge. Huge. Here's here's the DeWilt that I thought was just friggin' monstrous. And then Milfaki is just another, in another galaxy. Huge. Okay, so... If this thing's running at 20,000 ripples, and this thing's running through the gear train uh, divided by 275, so that's 7,000. 7,000. Right around there. This thing's fucking turning at 7,000 ripples. This, yeah, I gotta check something here. There's that bar. Okay, if this thing's turning at 7,000 ripples, then this chain is just flying. We'll make a mark here. And we'll make a mark uh, here. Whoop, whoop. And then we'll go one turn and see how far it traveled. That's about five inches there. Five inches of travel. Ah, four and a half. Four and a half. You give yourself an extra half an inch. Nobody will blame you. So four and a half times seven thousand. That's a lot of fucking inches divided by twelve. Uh, we're running at twenty-five. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five hundred. Uh, surface feet per minute. That's fucking nuts. I got the nut off and it's spinning free now. So that's that's something what threw me for a loop on the DeWolf grinder years ago. Ah, uh, this, there's no keyway. So how in the fuck do they transmit the torque? Well, they're relying on the friction caused by the nut. The nut uh, forces down, right? That gives you a clamping force. And then there's friction between the, the steel on both faces. Uh, the coefficient of friction on a lubricated surface, uh, somebody just commented on this, is 0 0.19. So say you have a quarter inch national fine, you're getting, oh, say 1,200 pounds of clamping force times that 0.9. You got a hell of a lot of friction there without a key. So that is what is transmitting the torque is actually the nut forcing down on that pinion. There's no keyway on there. And I went through the math in the, a long time ago in order to do that. I'm not going to do it here because I've already proved it to myself and to all and sundry that that's how it works and it must work because that's what they're doing so here's the chain lube the the bar oil pump this is interesting it runs on a worm and wheel so here's the worm on the main motor shaft here's the wheel 
and it does not appear to be reciprocating. There's no valves in here which the reciprocating pump would need or a diaphragm pump would need. This has got to be the same kind of pump what's in your engine, your engine oil pump, which is uh, would be a gear and then an offset crescent. But you look at the size of it, just tiny. So whatever in, is in there, it's in there forever. Not getting it apart. And you can feel what almost feels like gear lobes going across. That is a, a positive displacement, fixed displacement pump of some sort. But the innards will remain a mystery for now. If and you know exactly how they get this to chooch, please uh, down below me in the doobly-doo. Now this MOF... <laughs> Easy for me to say, tongue tangulated. MOSFET bridge, these pairs control uh, each set of brushes. And these are not easily coming off on account of being staked on here. Big, huge heat sink, huge heat sink. A big, chunky heat sink and a huge stake on Huge wire, huge conductor, little tiny shaft, which is kind of odd. Uh, it'll help if I uh, didn't have like greasy hands. That's in there, fucking good. Okay, that's the uh, magnet for the. Wow, wow, yeah. Sorry, that's the <laughs> that's the magnet for. Mmm, spinny. Four quadrant ferrite magnet for the Hall effect sensors bearing on the backside. I like this. They haven't they haven't taken slots out of this uh, magnetically permeable silicon steel. What they've done is added some brass slugs and they just drill in order to get this balanced properly. Uh, unidirectional fan. You can see they're, they're biased in one direction. So this motor is designed to turn only one direction. Which is fine because you only you don't really want the chainsaw turning backwards. Even if you got the chain on wrong, you still don't. Want, and look at the look at the field windings, epoxied and solid in place. They're not weeble wobbling around in the breeze at all. Dipped solid, very nicely done. As I said, incredible heat sink on the cork stuffer. This is odd though. They've added some elastic to the legs. Any particular reason for that? Or you one would think the solder would do the job, but uh, maybe for cosmetics, for some bumblefuck uh, going around and pointing things out. I don't see any other reason than that. There's some elastic applied, or uh, rather uh, conformally coated, just to keep the big chunks of water from totally destroying it. But uh, very likely the confuser, being as it is, urethane coated but not very well broke right off in there you would get some water in there and there's another control board that just turns the power orphan on if uh, the battery gets too low and then the housing itself is a thermoset plastique so it'll burn rather than melt no my mistake it's PA66 so a little bit higher a little bit higher uh, temperature resistance than just regular uh, PA6, but yeah, it could still melt right out of her. However, all this electronical doodads in here would uh, likely shut it down before it ever got that hot. Overall, the components are reasonably robust and they seem to be f more robust or at least bigger than the DeWilt. But recall the DeWilt is 60 volts. That means that it's far less current and current is you know it's the big beefy torquey sparks the more current the bigger everything has to be because it's running at, at three times the voltage everything can be more compact whether or not it's getting the same power out i'm not sure the fan is quite a bit smaller on the dewilt uh overall i would say the build quality on this is okay you're paying 600 Canadian copay. I mean, you can get a hell of a a hell of a home gamer saw for that. You know, you're not going to get a proper logger saw for under a thousand bucks, but you could get a, as I said, a Husqvarna, 
uh, Rancher 455. It's kind of the go-to for, for that same price and you know, makes a hell of a lot more noise. You know, <laughs> you're burning a lot more fuel. So is that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Now, as far as the plastique, a little bit chintzy on the plastique. Most of the parts that need to be metal or should be metal are metal with the exception of the bushings for the adjustment on the bar. The bar tensioning and the bar fixation are proper bolts. We're going to give this a proper hot supper and see how well she does. I see now why this broke off because this actually isn't in. Oh, let me let me zoom you in. Let me hip you to what I'm wrapping up. This guy here is actually way the. the the wire what's broken off is actually way over here so they've had to break that out and bring it over and then it kind of cantilevers over on that uh, urethane epoxy that rubber so that is why that broke off if you're ever into yours because you got a problem be careful of that guy because it's going to break off uh, quick fast in a hurry uh, it will be interesting to see how much lube we go through that is a complaint that the thing is a lube hog it's just ridiculous amounts of lube but uh oh you know we'll have to get her back together get her out on the road and buck up some wood thanks for watching keep your dick in a vice